Atlas Schnorn, mother of machines, something to look out for in this matchup. It's time for round number four as we shift to standard. Ailey and Corey are in the booth with the call. Thank you so much, Maria. Welcome to Constructed Friends. Ailey Loney alongside Corey Baumeister, and you can tell he <laughs> is ready for yes. what is about to come. And it is Domain Ramp. We're going to see a mirror match here between two Pro Tour champions, Reed Duke up against Jake Beardsley. So it's going to be a battle of the champs, Corey. We're going to just see, we're going to see which champ comes out on top here, which is kind of a nice little sub game we're playing as we head towards finding our world champion this weekend. Yep, absolutely going to see two people who won two of the three Pro Tours this year. Jake Beardsley, definitely a newer face, might not be as familiar with him as Reed Duke. You know, definitely a household name at this point. But you know, I've seen Jake Beardsley play plenty of times, and he is not. Nothing to scoff at. He's an incredible Magic player. Definitely deserves his right uh, to be here competing against the best. Definitely does. So let's get things underway here. Spar's headquarters for both players. And we're going to see the Korea's briefcase down on the board. There's the citizen that comes with it. And the turn passes back to the Duke. He's triggered. Yep. Well, one good briefcase deserves another, <laughs> doesn't it? These business gentlemen here, oh, uh, yes. both bringing their briefcases to work. <laughs> we cost legitimate business person sure. upon All Jake Beardsley and Reed Duke. And look at them. They are just going ham at this point. Yep. That briefcase being sacrificed for the mana invasion of Zendikar. Here, catch is basically what these battles yep. turn out to be. So these uh, domain decks, either if it's a domain oh, mirror match or not, the attacks, main though. thing with these domain yep. decks is you need to draw your early ramp, but you also need to draw payoffs. So yeah. there's plenty of, of draws where you draw one half or the other, and it just doesn't quite come together in perfect order. The player that can ramp into Atraxa immediately on yeah. perfect curve is going to be heavily favored because there's not much counterplay to that. Not at all. So if we can get to the big old Atraxa, that Six. player is going to be sitting pretty here. Tapping six now. Off and we're going to see the Archangel of Wrath. Okay. I'll uh, go for the Throat Invasion. That's fine. Yeah, we're All exactly. right. Go for the Throat the Invasion when it comes into becoming a 4 4. Yeah, 24 from Lifelink. One thing both of these players are very good at that we're going to hear and listen to each player is they're both very good at announcing exactly all the triggers, how the uh, gameplay, the game state is at all times. This is a very good sure. lesson for new players. Yeah. Be as precise as you can and uh, don't leave any chance for misinterpretation. Exactly right. You know, communication is key. Yeah. You know, players who have started playing in Arena or MCGO yeah. won't necessarily have that experience of saying, yeah. I'm going to do this, then that, then the next thing. So, yeah, it's a good yeah. habit so to get into, this. especially if you're looking to play in the regional oh, championship qualifiers. Definitely. And there Whew. is mom, Elish Norn. <laughs> says, oh, you have an Atraxa? Well, it's just a flyer Still at this point. And just what Mani was saying, this is one of the most important cards in this matchup, and Jake has the one main deck copy of this. There's more in the sideboard, but... Now, now this is incredible. Now you're going to double all your triggers here. Leyline Binding picks off two things, <laughs> and most importantly, Reed Duke's Leylines do not work. There's the Sunfall. Oh, though. nice. All right, Sunfall Here. takes care of the Critters, a massive flying threat, as well as Elish Norn off the battlefield. The Incubate token there for Reed Duke to call on at a later stage. Briefcase. More briefcases, more citizens joining the fight here for Jake Beardsley. And that did look to be like Jake's really only payoff. You know, we see all that mana. You know, if you had a Traxa, you're going to jam it. Uh, so nothing really to follow up. So we'll see what Reed has for a nice follow up here. Yeah. So just Leyline Binding for Jake. And oh, we got some stuff point. here for, for Reed. So mm -hmm. would say driver's seat to Reed Duke. Yep, Topiary Stomper, Bosage, you being able to take Stomper. care of a Leyline's Binding if he really wants to get back yep. the Korea's briefcase. And one thing that the briefcase is good at is refilling the hand. If you've used it for what it needs to in the late game, you know, just pay the five mana, draw the three cards. Uh, yeah. Uber, crack the briefcase. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, briefcase is just really perfect in this deck, being able to have a blocker for some early aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. It ramps you and is a late game draw effect. Um, really incredible stuff. Oh, nice. Sunfall and the Leyline Binding. Two lands, meh, not great, but Archangel of Wrath. Okay, not bad. Second copy here for Jake Beardsley. 
Archangel is probably one of those cards, Ailey, that they're going to side out here unless you don't have enough cards to bring in. It's just okay. It falls victim to Sunfall um, and doesn't have the biggest impact most of the time. Uh, but game one, definitely going to be a viable threat. Yep. So the 3-4 taking care of that 4-4 four, four Topiary sure. Stomper. Cycling the land here for Reed Duke. And it passes to his turn. Let's see what we can find off the top of the library here for our Pro Tour All-B-One champion. Yeah, and looking at herd migration, it doesn't look like we have the full domain, but we do have it for four, so you could get four three threes into play. That's, That's decent. Not shabby. Herd migration. Okay, sure. and there is the five there five. with nice. that red mana. And, uh, you know, perfectly reasonable. Archangel does even on its own stop two of them. Yeah. Um, but the Sunfall in hand is going to be quite the large threat. Oh, yeah. That Jake's going to convert all these 3-3s three into an extra power for each of these. Uh, um, extra counter for the Incubator. Exactly. Token, yeah. Yep. Thank you. So. Sunfall. <laughs> Here. Seven. And there goes all the creatures. So seven counters on that token. Go. What a fantastic card. Not only is this a wrath effect, but the fact that it exiles and leaves behind a gigantic threat. I mean, that yeah. is just incredibly powerful. It's kind of reminiscent of Hall of the Storm Giants from uh, Standards Past. Yeah. You know, just, oh, just have the 7-7 seven, seven here. Don't worry about it. Don't exactly. worry about it. Oh, you have nothing to do? Cool. I'm going to kill you with it. Yeah, if your Hall also yeah. exiles the entire battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Go to me. Alrighty, so the oh. incubate token is awoken, oh, and man. now the 7 7 is on the board. Yeah. It's off, oh, facing off against the citizen Second token phase. there from Reed Duke. Absolutely, has the stomper, stomper. Yep. to sure. be able to put another threat into play. And yeah, Reed's really just kind of out of steam here, you know, so really looking for one of those big draws. Atraxa, probably the number one draw that you want to see right now. Another herd migration is fine. Virtue of persistence is fine, uh, but really it's all about attracts at this stage of the game. Yeah. Land for turn. Go ahead with one card in your hands. Yep. Draw three. That's fine. Okay, so briefcase going down. Going to get some extra draws here for Reed. And I think I saw just a couple of lands and an invasion. So nothing too impactful. And now this 7 7 is truly doing some work. Yeah, chipping away at this one. It says chipping, chunking away at the <laughs> there you go, of yeah. Duke. Two more swings or two more hits from that guy. And uh, it's going to be game over for game number one here. 34 Jake Beardsley is sitting at. Good grief. That <laughs> Archangel did work. Yeah, absolutely. And the life totals relatively you know, not that important when it comes to kind of determining who is ahead on the battlefield. It's all about cards. Yep. You know, you're going to see even a spot where maybe Reed is down to five, but has seven cards in hand, and Jake maybe, you know, hell bent no cards in hand, and it just won't be that impactful. Yeah. Um, the, it really relies on how many cards you have. Yeah, card advantage certainly going to Reed Duke at the moment. Crit is on board, though. Jake Beardsley is winning that race. Let's see what Reed Duke has for us this turn. Yeah, it looks like Reed is plenty fine, starting with the cycle, Cycling. seeing if he can hit any big payoffs. Now, Reed Duke does have an answer for this 7-7, seven seven, as it is an artifact, so beside you can take care of that with the channel ability. Yeah. That's what he wants to go for at any point, but let's see what we're doing this turn here for the Duke. Yeah, and that's probably what's going to be the case Invasion here. The car. Yep. Oh, okay, Invasion. Still has the two mana available to mm -hmm. Besaidu if need be. You know, you can also get a little greedy if you want and Besaidu away Leyline Binding yep. to have a chump blocker with that 1-1 one -one, and yep. then use sure. Leyline Binding for the token. Yeah. Um, the one thing that's nice about that is if you do Leyline Binding, your opponent's token, your opponent's Besaju's or opponent's Leyline's Bindings don't give you that creature back, yeah, for which sure. does help. So, you know, like, re regardless, yeah. whichever target Reed Duke does decide to go for here, if that is the play, mm -hmm. you know, there's the Leyline Binding, like you mentioned. Exactly. Um, it will prevent the 7 damage from coming through. Block at the 7. Yep. So the seven's going to be blocked there. That's right. Yep. Didn't, uh, didn't fire off Besaju. 
Let's see. He wants to see what's coming up next year for Jake. So another briefcase hits the board. Another creature down on the battlefield. Ancestral Jake. recall oh, briefcase true. coming in. <laughs> 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 what an incredible card in this deck. It's what cool. a payoff, yeah. Yeah. I like the choices of lands from our two different players. Oh, yeah. Maybe showing uh, one who has been playing Magic for a very long time and maybe the new, new, new style. New versus old school. Exactly. Yeah. There we go. Gorgeous lands from both players. Oh, yeah. Theros lands, some of my personal favorites. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> now, moving to Reed Duke's turn. So holding on to Besaidu and the Ley Lines Binding. Yes. As the sun falls, right. so that's an excellent card to have against this ever-growing threat. Yeah, I think that's exactly why we're trying to hold on to that, is just get the value from Sunfall, leave Besaidu around um, for something more impactful. I do love this point of the matchup as we're deep into the mid game here. So the players cool. take a little bit of time just to yeah. think they know what they're going to do, but now they're thinking a couple steps ahead. You know, in the beginning of the game, it's just this, that, the next thing set up. But now, so many more choices to make here. Absolutely. And it really does come down to, you know, the, the play that might be the most obvious play is maybe not the, uh, the the correct play, the you correct know? Play, yeah. it, it seems like it's right at the time, but maybe you're like, okay, I can buy a little bit of time, get a little bit more value off Sunfall, yeah. get a little bit more value with the briefcase. And that's really those minor edges, especially in a grind fest like this domain sure, battle, sure. Um, that really shows off um, the players that yeah. know their deck and just shows off how skilled these players are. Exactly. Now, talking of the, speaking about the briefcase, We've got two cards in hand for Reed. These are very yeah. reactive cards. They're not progressing as board state at all. Is he now incentivized to try and get that briefcase back to refill the hand? It's probably getting closer and closer now because it does Seven. look like migration. Reed has it all lined up where he can go beside you, get the briefcase, and draw it end step. Mm -hmm. You know, so seven mana, draw three, blow up a ley line binding. Perfectly reasonable, especially in a situation like this where the pressure's on. You yeah. know, if Jake didn't have a follow up here, maybe he was okay so not firing it off, binding. but I like it here without having anything else to do. Yeah, so Reed do needs to get this board under control. Soon. Those are five, three, three beasts that will just chew away the remaining oh, 10 life. Yeah. So we're going to see three extra cards here in hand for Reed Duke. Can he find a board wipe? Is there another yeah, Sunfall to go on? I believe I Herd migration of his virtue. own. Oh, OK. Pat. Virtue will take care of one. Do we have enough to do virtue yep. and herd migration? Uh, which land did you search for? Uh, Zyatorius. Zyatorius. Seven, yes. If we have a land drop, if you want to cast the uh, the virtue side. So it does look like we're going to be one, uh, one short of that. Mm -hmm. But Reed could also take a line where maybe he just casts the other side of Virtue, kills one creature, gains yeah. a little bit of life, plays a Topiary Stomper for a blocker, and kind of does all this yeah. middling stuff to make sure he can stay alive that Oh, yeah, way. of course, yeah. The Virtue Persistence, I don't yeah. imagine will come down now, but Lock Lane Scorn, get rid of a creature, get some blockers down, and then next turn, once we're a little bit more stable, yeah. we could see... The Virtue of Persistence hit the ball. I love this card. I love way. this card, too. What an incredibly mm. powerful card from Wilds of Aldrain. It's seeing play in Esper Control, Graveyards. Domain Control, yum, yum. Golgari. You know, yeah. it, it's really seeing yeah. play in most of our decks and standards. Yeah. yeah. It, it is the most played card from Wilds of Aldrain. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. It, it's really, really good. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> it does make sense, yes. I mean, just looking at the amount of big dumb creatures in these graveyards. <laughs> yes, please. Give but me. you know, speaking of the biggest of, of the creatures, one thing we haven't two. seen from either player, mm -hmm. Atraxa. Yeah. You know, and it, both players have drawn a lot of cards, fired off two briefcases, and we still have not seen it quite yet. <laughs> uh, first one to find it, though, is really off to the races. Oh, yeah. And with Elish Norn. Yeah, Elish Norn's hanging out in the graveyard. She wasn't exiled, right? Or Sunfall uh, does exile. Sunfall so, yeah. does exile. Okay. So that so one's gone. It's kind of like a nonbo in that regard with Virtue of Persistence, but yeah. you know there are still some very big creatures in the bin that yeah. we do can use to try and get his way back into this. 34 up against 12 is the life totals here for Jake oh, Beardsley man. versus Reed Duke. Absolutely. And here comes some damage in there. 
Mm -hmm. Now, when Jake attacks this way, the one thing Reed always gets to do is block profitably, which the only profitable block is the 4-4 on the 3-3, and then he's trading up yeah. for yeah. a beast, beast and a this. stomper for Jake. Oh, so this is a great exchange yeah. for Reed Duke. So this clearly should gone. indicate that Jake has a plan. Otherwise, that was not a good attack. Yeah. You know. Second main phase. So, oh, attacks in hand. Okay, there it is. We're going to see the Grand Unifier hit the board here. This looks like this might be Archangel to finish off some cards. Sure. I'll send two at yep. the Beast with yep. one damage marked on it and two at the Topiary Stopper with three damage marked on it. All right. We okay. time. 38. <laughs> nice. Excellent follow-up there on a I've big got attack. Mm -hmm. And now I believe we can still cast a Traxa. Let's see. All right. Green, seven blue, black, white, six, seven. Seven. Yep. Grand Unifier. Yeah. Let's look at the top of the library here Four. and see how many different Eight. cards Ten, if you want to double check we my map. can find. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear about their mm -hmm. things, for sure. A Chromo Seed Shark, another Invasion, two Chromos. I bet the creature is automatically a track, so we'll Battle. see. Bramble Familiar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that card. Mm. Bramble Familiar, we see in this deck, but there's also some other spicy oh, yeah. decks that we might see for some Bramble Familiar. Uh -huh. uh, for people not familiar with Standard, we'll leave those surprises for a Pretty little bit later, though. We'll see if that shows up later. Yeah. <laughs> Just tease a little bit. But yeah, I mean, oh. and then we got too many, what, four okay. card types there? Interesting, did go for the Host Shark. Host Shark is excellent, especially with Leyline Binding. We're going to see that combination where Host Seed Shark doesn't track how much mana you spend. Yeah. It's the mana value of the card. So you can play this. One of the best turn four plays you have with this powerful Phyrexian Shark mm -hmm. is play this and then Leyline Binding for one, Incubate for six. Just absolutely incredible. It's, it's kind of like Baby Shark Typhoon, right? That's a big Segway. shark. Yep. Yeah, it, it is, yes. Yeah. It is It is a big shark, but, you know, it, it's very similar. And if you can just get yeah. stuff for, you know, for free, in essence, for costing your spells, like, that's an excellent return on investment there for Jake. Some nice value. That's also a heavenly host of very angry angels hanging out here for Jake Beardsley. So we need something yeah, for right, Reed Duke. Right now, Jake does have 10 power in the air that Reed does have answers mm -hmm. to. Four to your Archangel. Works nice. Well. All right. That's angel on Angel out. Violence. There is also the Leyline Binding to take care of Atraxa. Draw for turn. Now it'll be interesting to see if Jake just wants to go Atraxa at face to try to get some damage in or for wants to play this Invasion and get some, uh, you know, uh, advance his battlefield. Yeah. We'll see what he values more. Bang, here's the play. Shark into Leyline Binding, deciding if that is what he wants to do right now. I like this here by Jake. So his In plan is to is still cast Leyline, mm -hmm. but you cast Made the four. other spell that you're going to cast first, you just in the case battle. there's a go for the throat or a Leyline Trigger, Binding. Sure. You can then respond with Leyline Binding and still get One both tri look. triggers here. Very nice. Instant speed following up on the sorcery speed, like you mentioned, in case of a go for the throat, but no such removal in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Leyline Binding is available mm -hmm. for Reed Duke, but he's picking his spot. Block. Yep, you'll go to 19. Yeah, and you go to 45. That is correct. 45. <laughs> Impressive. It's like Commander life totals at this point. Yeah, there you go. Make <laughs> a Phyrexian might. Yeah, Mirax, all right, we're on the yeah. control. <laughs> Reed says, Finish your game plan. not Let's that go. enthusiastically. Yeah. Like, I guess I'll make a might. Hey, you gotta use all your mana, Corey. Yep, and Reed just unable oh. to find any attractions here. Reed has three, Man. and you know, this looks like this is a solid half of the deck already used or already drawn here from Reed. And this Chrome Home Seed Jock also dodges the Lock Queen Scorn, which is yes. Sucks <laughs> for and, Reed Duke fans out there. That's and for a, sure. And Duke, another thing, it really uh, dodges as well as cut down. You mm -hmm. know, so I mean, that is kind of the power of this. Is it can't really be killed by the traditional and most popular removal spells uh, that are in the format right now. For sure. Big things here for Reed Duke. Sure. Are we going to see the passing of the turn? Sure will. And here's the thing we're probably going to see. There's a Leyline Binding that Reed could fire off on Atraxa. Yeah. 
the the problem is is it's so bad if oh, yeah. Jake does destroy the ley line, then mm -hmm. you get the trigger again. Yeah. So it's the last thing you want to do. The way the way you want to deal with the Traxas is with Sunfall and pretty much Sunfall yeah. only. Because even if you go for the throw it, you know, you can get it back with the Virtue, but Reed can get it back with his Virtue, too. So. Sure can. So yeah. setting up here for maybe exactly that, try and kill this Atraxa and then get it back almost yeah. immediately on the upkeep trigger. So Leyline Binding on the wow, token. Wow, just the here. token. Okay. okay. Tokens don't come back if they get bounced, so I hope uh, Leyline gets bounced. Okay, I give up. Good game. Oh. Okay, uh, I give up, so Okay, Reed. I give up. Good game, yeah. <laughs> at, at a certain point in the matchup, you're like, okay, sure, I could try and stick it out a couple more turns, but let's just go to game two. Let's look at the sideboard decisions that the players made yeah. and, uh, you know, try and just get the last two games. So take a look at cards in hand here for our players. One of my favorite cards from the new set. I mean, okay, it's not one of, it's my favorite card from the new set. And I think a player like Reed Duke, who loves to draw a magic card here and there, mm -hmm. up the beanstalk, really making its mark on, you know, really all the formats, Pioneer, Standard, Modern, sure. and everything, uh, even Legacy. You know, we've seen this card in every single format and being able to sideboard into this card that basically you don't want it if you're playing against Mono Red. You don't want to play it up against Thalia in Mono White, but when you're playing this value off game plan here, okay, up the beanstalk is the perfect thing you want and the perfect card for turn two. Exactly right. So as far as headquarters for both players, once again, to start things off. Yep. And that is um, for players that are looking to maybe play this deck, mm -hmm. um, you know, copy these decks from these amazing players. That's what you want to start with. You start with the headquarters and then you complete domain with the second triome. Yeah. That way you can cast Leyline Binding on yep. turn one. Or turn two, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> oh man, domain is really cool. It I, is a cool I, deck. I really like the cards that came along with, you know, that keyword. Mm -hmm. Topiary Stomper hits the board, sure. so Reed Duke is rampant. End of the races. And this is about half of uh, Reed Duke's team that decided to play Domain. The rest were on Mono White Aggro. So pretty much yeah. as far opposite as you can as you can be. Mm -hmm. And it did seem like, you know, talking to these players, the vibe is the Domain players after seeing the metagame were a little bit happier. Okay. So here is that amazing start that Monty was talking about at the booth, and that is Topiary Stomper That's into Invasion of Zendikar. Yeah. Being able to attack into it is kind of the dream. Yeah, that's what you want to be doing here, because as soon as Invasion yeah. hits, you get your lands, you turn on your Topiary Stomper, it's able to attack. Yep. Jake can't block at the moment. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You can't attack or block until you have yeah. the prerequisite amount of mana here. Seven. So that invasion. Yeah, I and mean, you flip it, you get yeah. extra mana there from the, the hasty creature. Yes. And a big 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, and you can follow up then with another four, four up with the beanstalk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wee. And we'll see what kind of follow-up is here for Jake, and also uh, yeah. like how many sunfalls you leave in, because <laughs> overall that's not a proactive card that you're trying to play. You know, you definitely want to bring in more cards like more Chrome Host Sea Sharks, Disdainful Strokes, yeah. Negates, Up the Beanstalks, that kind of stuff. And Wrath of God Effects is kind of playing to not lose instead of playing <laughs> to win. But you got to leave some in, you know, yeah. you, you got to fight the fight. I would like to give you an invasion. Yep. Sure. All right. All right. So, so, so there's a nice, you know, exchange here. Yep. If you get an invasion, I get an invasion. Only difference is there's a vigilant blocker in the way. Here exactly. For, uh, yeah. The only problem is whoever does it first usually is doing it better. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think Reed would yeah, snap block if Jake went in. Block. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Makes sense. He agrees with you. Yeah. Hey, Corey, you're pretty good at this, huh? I guess so. <laughs> I'll be here all weekend. <laughs> all right, big draw there from Reed, picking up a Disdainful Stroke, so now he can possibly progress his battlefield with something like a Herd Migration. We d oh, we do have the Mirex, so you can go Four, land nine, nine six, essentially, nine. play um, Herd Migration, draw a card, thanks to Up the Beanstalk, and then hold up Disdainful Stroke, or you could just nice. play That's another Up the Beanstalk. beanstalk. Yep. Nice. So here Reed went with a little bit less value. Yep. You know, you could have played Up the Beanstalk, 
drew a card off that and then drew two off herd migration, but values the disdainful stroke for sunfall yeah. or attracts a way more. Oh yeah, I think you know protecting your board state here is way more important. I mean, Reed is, for sure. I would say, very far ahead at this point. Yeah, has the creatures, has an answer for a sunfall, and yeah. at the moment there's nothing in hand for Jake that will be able to stop him. Agreed. And a nice thing that Reed did is he tapped his creature. Uh, the flip side of invasion yeah. instead of leaving sure. it untapped and some other piece of mana because that would open the door for Jake to go, okay. you know, main phase one, ley line Just binding your creature, and then post board, play something yeah. big, and then Reed wouldn't have a counter spell. So yeah. that's a nice uh, sequence there for Reed. Ossification here. Ossification enters, trigger targets, awaken Skyclave. And Awakened Skyclave is yep. the target, so when that it's does, or if that does come back, if Ossification mm -hmm. is targeted, it will be on the battle side once again. Uh, should I just put it over here? That yeah, that works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Gets the 2-2 uh, two, two Incubate token. Yeah, and things looking quite good for Reed here. That Disdainful Stroke is just going to be so incredible. If, if Reed, you know, kind of bricks. Yeah. I mean, how are you going to brick on three up the Beanstalks is all I'm saying, <laughs> but... Uh... Here, have a card. It's a really, really good card. It's just, it just replaces itself, you know, and then whatever else you're costing over five mana, it, you know, it's a chair on top, yep. so... And it's not even over five mana, so it does trigger off the Ley Line Binding, just the mana value of yeah. the card, too, so yeah. plays around that... Uh, um, that little clause The discount, there. yeah, for sure. Exactly. So at this point, you know, Jake has mana available to waken up that uh, the little 2-2. Two -two. Yep. So <laughs> could kill one of these creatures, but that's a lot of damage coming through. Yeah, take 12 already. Yeah. Um, and this is 15 damage. Reed doesn't really have anything to clear the blockers away, like ossification mm -hmm. or anything like that. But still, I think uh, whatever Reed does here for his turn, it's going to end with leaving two mana open, one of them being blue, uh -huh. and says, try to beat me through a disdainful oh stroke, Jake. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> Three beanstalks. <laughs> Whee! Reed is moving on up. All the critters. Double blocking one of the critters. The 2-2 two -two will die. Yep, take 12. Down to four. For Jake Beardsley. And now it looks like Reed does have the option to cycle a land as well mm -hmm. uh, if the Disdainful Stroke is not needed. But I bet it's going to be needed. Oh, yeah. Good that's from his big stroke. taps. And that's GG. I will concede. I will concede, says Jake Beardsley. Okay. Much Ow. better draw there from Reed. And yeah. these, these game ones of these domain mirror matches tend to go on way longer oh, than yeah, the post sure. boards because you have all this okay, dead removal or the slow removal spells. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, before, post boards, they do go a lot faster. Before sideboard, you know, no reactive permission at all. You know, there's yeah. no counter spells in the main deck. It's just a case of ramp and smack. Exactly. Let's see who does it best. And we see Reed has three disdainful strokes, so it puts a high value on that. It's great against other domain decks, great against invasion of Alara decks, yeah. Esper Control, really nice sideboard card right now. And then we see from Reed or er, from Jake, all four. Jeez. So really wants disdainful strokes. Hopefully able to find a couple of those this time around. Is on the play, so would hopefully be able to set himself up in a similar position like yep. as Reed did, you know. Establishing a board state, being able to protect it, and then just chipping away at the life total of Reed Duke. Exactly. And then we do see Jake has that uh, yep. that topiary stomper Draw. all ready to go for turn three, I believe. Uh, is that Triome? It's Bant Triome. Yeah, Spar's headquarters, Where's and that is the Ator's yeah. Proving Grounds. Okay. <laughs> oh, like you okay. mentioned, <laughs> the one mana, no thank you very much. Yep. So Layla and Binding taking care of up the stalk. And Stomper, find land. If there's an invasion to follow up for Jake, he's going to be pretty darn happy indeed. This is the, this is the play pattern we see on a successful domain ramp turn. Exactly. I didn't see it as of now. And yeah, look at Jake's hand. Not very good right now. So unless Jake can find something, invasion would be the best draw. You know, But even any kind of bigger spell uh, would be excellent. And Reed's hand just looks great. You, know, you have another up the beanstalk. You have this, you have the invasion. Yeah. Reed's got it all ready for next turn. Jake's hand, very reactive. I also see a copy of Anoint with Affliction in hand there for Reed. So if he needs to get rid of Man of Value 3 or less, Critter yeah, can do so. So at the moment, the hand's looking a lot stronger. Let's see if Jake can find an invasion. 
Yeah, and that's an interesting one to play. It really only hits Topier Stomper and yeah. Giant Incubate tokens. Mm -hmm. But, you know, still an instant speed way to deal with those tokens, and those tokens can yeah. be big. I guess it does deal with the shark as well. That's a really important target. Yeah. That's probably the biggest one. Yeah, try and get that off the board before it starts making little incubator tokens. Sure. And that's not good news for Jake Beardsley as we're going to see the lands. So Jake does have the ley line for the Stomper, so can deal with that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a bunch of ley lines is all fine and good, but if you are able to deal with these ley lines at some point, you're getting value back. You're yeah. getting the come into play ability from Stomper. You're getting a come into play trigger from up the Beanstalk. So, you know, not, not yeah. ideal, but as it stands right now, Reed doesn't have any way to take those off the battlefield. Yeah. The Topiary Stomper needs the one extra land to be able to take out that invasion. Yeah, and Reed hasn't played a land yet this turn, so can do that right now. There we go. Attack the invasion. There Binding goes the stomper. stomper. Binding takes care of that. Okay, we need a, Jake needs a big draw step here. Yeah. Double Sunfall is not what you want. Mm -mm. Go. Oof. So it has six mana, so the Stomper is on line next turn, if Jake decides to not cycle this Proving Grounds away. Needs something else to do, though. You know, he can't win off the back of this Topiary Stomper alone. Sure, it's a good yeah. dinosaur, but <laughs> not up against everything else that Reed Duke has at his disposal. Exactly. And yep. now maybe it's a little too late. Reed picked up the Disdainful Stroke, Ooh. gets the up the Beanstalk, and is going to just start, start getting it done. And the one thing I do want to point out, there's one player that has up, up the Beanstalk, yes. and Jake decided to not play any of them. And they've looked incredible. Yeah. You know, they've looked mm -hmm. incredible so far here. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah just, just getting the cost trigger, you know, even if your, your spell is countered or combat. killed or whatever, just yeah. being able to replace the card Still that you lost to one of those removal spells. Exactly. Then. Jake's sideboard, though, much better set up against these hyper aggressive decks, yeah. more lithomatic barrages, that kind of stuff. So, you know, you can't sideboard uh, against everything. No, you, should, you certainly yeah, can't. And that's, that's something that the players uh, exactly. in testing will. Yep come to decisions about, you know, what yep. are they most, I don't want to say afraid of, but what are they expecting? Yes, expecting and kind of afraid of what's your worst matchup? Yeah. Is it fixable? What cards fix it? You know, and all these questions you ask yourself in testing, and that's why these players meet up for two and sometimes even more weeks beforehand. Yeah. And uh, these are the questions they're trying to figure out. Yep. So draw off Beanstalk might be going for the other ley line for Beanstalk to have this ley line be a nice two for one. Oh yeah. I'll ley line your ley line and I'll just have some beanstalks over here. And now next turn, well, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So Reed can untap, go herd migration, draw oh. two cards, and hold up disdainful <laughs> stroke. I am so jealous right now of, oh, of Reed Duke. <laughs> As I am most of the time, because he is awesome. <laughs> Definitely a mainstay of competitive yes. Magic the Gathering play. Two There's Herd Migration. Yeah. Uh, two cards. Draw two, I guess, is good. Five. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Same with Jake. Cycle. Great, great people. Yep. You know, you, you get to the point where you just want them both to win. Like, I just want yep. everyone to have a good time. But you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, there sure. can only be one, so. And here we go. We're going to see one of these Sunfalls attempted oh, yeah. to be fired off. There's the disdainful stroke, and it'll just be if Reed decides to counter Something. this or just lets it go. It's not lethal now, so it's not a snap counter. Depending on Reed's hand, if he has a follow up, he might not care. Yeah. Once he got invasion, two Thanks lands, stroke. three lands, yep. Merrick's Chrome yep. Host Seed Shark. All right, so next turn, Jake does have another shot at the Sunfall. Yeah. So and let's see what Reed Duke draws here to protect it. And Reed doesn't have a way to draw a bunch of cards. Oh, never mind. There's a ley line to draw some extra cards. <laughs> and that could find um, Reed another Disdainful Stroke yeah. or a Negate. Huge advantage to Reed Duke here. Yeah, and that's a lot of damage coming through. You know, he can just flat out ignore that invasion for the time being and just yeah. get 15 points of damage in right now. Yeah, and it's, it's a pretty low opportunity cost if you do just want to fire one beast at the invasion. Mm -hmm. It's really the cost of... 
Reed's just going to be asking himself, do I want to overextend into the Sunfall, which Jake has to have? Yeah. You know, if Reed just attacks 15 to the face, we'll take you there's everything. no reason we'll to so kill the invasion. Yeah. You'd rather be on the battlefield than in exile. Yeah, for sure. You so. know, it, it's kind of like an insurance plan, you know, exactly. for later. If I can kill it later on, then I have another creature on the board. So. Exactly. So a nice attack by Reed. Yeah. Yeah. Down to five goes Jake. Reed Duke still sitting at 20. All these other things. Disdainful Stroke doesn't really help against an opposing Disdainful Stroke. So one thing Reed might be trying to line up here Vision. is something like if the Sunfall resolves, mm -hmm. Reed could go Leyline Binding after it resolves, draw two cards off Beanstalk, up the Beanstalk, mm -hmm. target Jake's Leyline Binding, get a 4-4 four, four back, yeah. activate Mirex. That's yeah, five. That's five. Now. He will also have to find an answer to the Incubate token because Jake has conveniently seven mana. But if he can piece that together, he's lining up a lethal attack for next turn through a Sunfall, which is impressive. <laughs> yeah. You think, oh, cool, board wipe. Well, reset. Let's try and figure out. But, you know, Reed Duke has the answers available to him. Yep. Just w with what's in his hand. Promo Seed Shark, Leyline Binding. Now, Jake can counter the Leyline Binding with one of these Disdainful Strokes. And that will will prevent it pretty safely. Yeah, but you know that's two extra cards in hand for Reed Duke. Yeah. So, looks like Reed's just going to cycle one of these lands because, well, if he finds disdainful Five stroke, the game's three. over. That's yeah. I'm well, thinking about it here, because that's the choice. You either cycle a land and then you can't activate Mirex, mm -hmm. or you let it resolve, try to go for Leyline Binding and a Mirex token to win the game, but. That's a little more risky, so it yeah. depends if Reed wants to go for the more conservative line or try to win on the spot. And this is all with Sunfall on the stack, so Cycling. correct. Yep. at this point, it makes more sense to cycle the land, see what you find. Is it Disdainful Stroke or Negate? <gasps> oh, my! <laughs> what a draw! <laughs> <laughs> Corey, it. you willed it into existence. Are you writing the storybook round for Reed Duke, I ask? I'm trying, trying to write a storybook ending. I think the storybook <laughs> ending for Reed would be that he... Uh, advances to the top eight of this tournament. That's one step closer. Well, we'll see they've both done it before. When we come back after the short break, we'll have plenty more constructed action here at the World Championships. Welcome back to coverage of the World Championship here from Las Vegas. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Corey Baumeister, and we are going to join a 
another matchup for you, friends. In progress to see who is going to be able to duke it out here with two of the most submitted lists this weekend, which is Golgari yep. midrange, oh, excuse me, which is Esper midrange yep. versus Golgari. So yep. let's jump in here. Mitchell Tamblin up against Alan Andrzejewski and see how these players are doing. As we join, Mitchell Tamblin is up one and zero. So gonna be feeling good about that. Golgari midrange wasn't something we were expecting to see too much of, Corey. No, not really. And you look at these Golgari midrange decks and you're just like, yeah, that's, um, that's some cards, you know? Like, <laughs> it, it, it's nothing that looks really flashy. It doesn't look particularly powerful, yeah. but you know, it's a recipe as old as time. Powerful, tough to deal with creatures that are usually green, yeah. mixed with black for extremely powerful removal spells, hand disruptions, and these kind of decks just end up having the best post-board games. Yeah. Because you get to get all these removal spells out, you get to bring in Duress, probably the most impactful sideboard card maybe of all time. Which we're seeing right now. Exactly. Taking a look at the end, the Wandering Emperor, wedding announcement, as well as the Virtue of Loyalty. Yep. Won't be taking that Fairy Mastermind, though. And you'd think, you know, with all the text in that land that you can take it off duress. <laughs> nope, that is uh, not the case. You, <laughs> That is still just a basic land. Yeah, that's just there to tilt people who really don't like reading cards. <laughs> all right, so information now known for Mitchell yep. Tamblin who is up a game, sitting at 3-0. and oh, So yep. going to be looking to improve that record, get to 4-0, 4-0. Four, oh, four wins, you're locked for day two. You're locked, and I mean, making day two of the World Championship at this cut is already yeah. just a phenomenal accomplishment um, and really sets you up to make a deep run in day two. Yeah. And just get it, get that monkey off your back yeah. right away and not have to worry about, am I going to be, be playing tomorrow? I'm sweating at three and three going, oh my gosh, I really, really need to win this one. Because exactly. that's the worst place to be. It truly is. Oh, goodness me. Maswa Dread Knight. Oh, this, I think, is my favorite card from the set. It's also Golgari. So, you know, yeah. we can agree on something for once, Corey. Exactly. Yep. And uh, <laughs> this seems like this would be the deck that Reed Duke would be playing. It's the most Reed Duke card I've ever seen in my <laughs> entire life. But uh, mm, Value. <laughs> life for cards. Gimme, exactly. gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really incredible. It kind of lives on forever. It does put you in some weird spots where if this card gets destroyed on a turn where you kind of have to do something else with your yeah. mana, then it can go away. Um, but for the most part, it's an incredibly powerful card that will good. stick around for a long time. Sure will. And we're going to see the Mosswood, <laughs> the Mosswood Dread Knight. Corey, stop vamping for the camera. <laughs> Mosswood Dread Knight is going to get taken care of by the Knight off of Virtue of Loyalty. This card is absolutely nuts. Okay, yes. Virtue of Persistence, yes, great. But mm -hmm. in a long, grindy matchup, if you have a board established, this card absolutely slaps. It really, really is powerful. So now we see that yeah, taken down here, and that will have Perfect. to be adventured. Yep. Sorry, get those journeys out to so Dread Whispers, get a card, lose a life, and here comes Denik, Pious Apprentice. Yep. And it does kind of technically go to the graveyard, but you have that time to cast it. Sure. So Denning on the board, the 2-3 that, uh, from what I've heard from every aggro player, they really, really don't want to see this weekend. Yeah. 2-3 lifelink is the bane of all 2-2s two everywhere. Exactly. And most of these Esper midrange decks play a, a small amount of them. You know, it's really the Esper Legends deck that max out on them, but yep. not for Alan. Alan did decide to just play four in this style of deck. And this deck is pretty close to Esper Legends. There's a yep. couple more spells. You see Fairy Mastermind um, in full force, um, but otherwise very a lot of similarities to Esper Legends. Yeah. It doesn't target. Esper has been so strong. Uh, you know, it's gotten knocked down a couple pegs since the last World Championship. You know, yes. the, the bannings in Standard have certainly shifted things around and shuffled, shuffled the, the archetypes up a bit. And we've got a good display of the power of the Standard yeah. metagame right now. So Absolutely, yeah. And the metagame looks great. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It looks powerful. And I think the players were just asking here how Blossoming Tortoise works, <laughs> if you can bring back a land. And it doesn't target, so you get to just return a land. Yeah. So Denik does not shut that ability off, is what they're double checking. And completely fine to call a judge in any situation, oh, yeah, even the course. World Championship. Uh -huh. Never be afraid to call a judge. Yeah, judges are there to help and to make sure that the game proceeds as Garfield intended. There we go, yes. <laughs> 
Blossoming Tortoise is so, so cool, especially in multiples. Yeah. If you oh, can yeah. get them down with the new creature lands, just, you know, making 4-4s four for two mana, yes, please. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and we could easily see that. And, you know, it pumps it itself. So, you know, yeah. I mean, it, right now this cottage wakes up as a 5-5 five five yeah. for three mana right now. Insane. The cottage is one of the more impressive cards from Wild of Eldraine, yeah. and it's a land. You know, we see even some players that are <laughs> splashing for this land, mm -hmm. you know, that really shows the power of this powerful I just cottage. Wanna, I just want to shout out uh, Jesper. I, I'm going to butcher his name there, but the artist of this card, Jesper. It looks like the cottage is screaming at the bird. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> that is awesome. It's very restless. Oh, it sure is. Get off my porch, bird. And that is Danik <laughs> Pius Apprentice getting off the board, courtesy of Lockthwain scorn there from Mitchell Tamblin. What sound does a screaming cottage make, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks now for Alan Andrzejewski. Wants to maintain his undefeated run, but Mitchell Tamblin is making it difficult for him. Yep. Look at the land disparity here at the moment. Yeah, and Tortoise helped with that. Oh, you know, yeah. you got one, and now do we see yeah. that, and then Excelling. there's a trigger Damn. there. And whenever you can connect with Tortoise, or even just attack, even if it dies in combat, yeah. the fact that you get two lands out of the deal, and the one nice thing is you mill three cards, then return a land. It's not of those lands. Yeah. So if Restless Cottage dies, it will return that later on. So, so good. an incredible magic card. Yeah, eight points of damage there. Denik again, the follow-up from Alan Andrzejewski. Does find the fourth land, but yeah. things not looking very good here for the Polish player. Yeah, absolutely. And Tamblin is just overvaluing the Esper mid-range deck, which is kind of the value deck, you know? I mean, there's oh, yeah. a lot of cards that just go on forever. Rafine, different things to do from your graveyard. It's almost impossible to fully run out of steam, Yeah. but it's the decks that can kind of go over it or go under these Esper mid-range decks. That's when they have the problem, and that's exactly what Tamblin's doing right now. So things looking good here for the Golgari player. Just using all the resources available, the lands, the graveyard, the yep. board state itself, and has, you know, just everything that he could possibly need at the moment with the, the cards in exile too. You know, we've got the Moss with Dread Knight still hanging out there that he can utilize yep. again. Virtue of Persistence, if he wants to just jam that, you know, why not just yeah. go for it? Yeah, and there's some solid creatures in the graveyard. I'm looking at you, both Shieldreds in the yard. Yeah. You know? I mean, there is uh, an, some incredible value creatures, both Shieldred, the Apocalypse. And just Shieldred. And just Shieldred, yeah. yeah. Pulling a Madonna or a Cher, just, you know, <laughs> no comma needed for that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're in Vegas, may as well. <laughs> go for the throat, taking care of Denik once again. Get out of here, Pious Apprentice. And another attack similar to the previous turn. The Cottage is going to exile Denik once again, so that won't come back as the Apparition. And Alan Andrzejewski is just getting smushed here. Yeah, this is an absolute beating. And then we do see the flip over of the Mishra's Foundry. That is another creature land that gets a reduced mm -hmm. cost thanks to the Cottage, or thanks to the Tortoise, excuse me. So one mana to make a 3-3 Assembly Worker <laughs> is a pretty good yeah. creature land value, you know? Oh my goodness. Incredible. Man. And this is about over here. I don't really yeah. see what we can do. I Board don't think wipe? there's a lot of sunfalls. Wondering Emperor, maybe? No, just another Danik, man. Yep. This guy just doesn't quit. No sunfalls in the list or anything. These Esper mid-range decks are definitely just a creature deck. Yeah. You know, they can transform into a little bit more of control, but yeah. overall it is very much just an aggressive deck as well. Exactly right. So now Mitchell Tamblin, you know, he, he's got the world at his fingertips at this point. He's just like, hmm, how would I like to kill you this turn? Yep. And such a fun deck to play, too. Yeah, Testing for this event, playing some <laughs> of the Golgari decks. I did not think we would see a lot of them, no? to be honest, because it has some really bad matchups. You know, mm -hmm. the five-color Alara deck, for instance, if anyone's seen that deck, it's pretty much impossible. You yeah. know, you just cannot beat that deck. Um, but... If you can get these mid-range battles, you just have game against everything. You know, yeah. it's 45% to 55% against the field, excluding that combo deck, of course. And you just always have game. Yeah, not too many Brave Souls playing Invasion of Alara combo this weekend. I believe only three. Three people, yep. Yeah, so may see that at some point. 
But I think we're going to be seeing quite a lot of Esper midrange and the Skolgari midrange deck if Mitchell Tamblin continues. And I believe I saw from Tamblin a Gix command in hand. Just debating if you want to go with the creature lands or try to do any Gix command shenanigans. I think it's basically what you were saying. How do I want yeah. to win the game here? And it looks like yeah, we what, are going to see What's he worried about it. at this point? Just like, what, what is the card that we're going to see from Alan, if any? And it's going to be none as a clean 2-0 for Mitchell Tamblin yeah. takes him to 4-0. and oh. That's got to feel good, Thor Corey. That's got to feel really good, being 4-0, locking yourself into day two at, well, the hardest tournament of the oh, year. Yeah. Huge congratulations to Tamblin. And I'm very jealous because that deck looks like it's a blast. It looks super fun indeed. We'll see much more of it if he continues his run. When we come back after this, we'll have plenty more action. But the news deck, desk first.